Oh, sure. Yeah, that'd be cool. We got a stranger here from California. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're pretty far from Pretty far. Actually, <laughs> actually, he was. So, would you uh, be open to new members of your Amish group? If you ever get in this way again, why? Feel free to stop in. The Amish are some of the most misunderstood people in the entire country. Misunderstood good and misunderstood bad. <laughs> and here in Ohio, there is over 80,000 of them. That's enough to fill a football stadium with Amish people. If, if, if they watch football, which they don't. If you don't know who the Amish are, I think they're easiest to explain by what they don't do. They're not allowed to have worldly things, which means no electricity, no buttons, no zippers, no haircuts, no internet. That goes without saying, no electricity. They're not even allowed to say I love you. Infiltrating the Amish is not a, is not a hard thing to do. Those entire towns with grocery stores, cafes, bakeries, all run by the Amish. And thankfully, I got a man on the inside. Hello. Hello, how you doing? I'm good, I'm good. My name is Eli Yoder. I uh, grew up Old Order Amish, left the Amish when I turned 18. He escaped as a teenager and has been living in, in, in this world, the outside world, for years now. I found him on TikTok, believe it or not. This is how you smuggle a smartphone into an Amish community. Now, in a couple days, I'm coming back out here and I'm gonna check in the Amish community here underneath this bridge. Sure enough, there's the baggie. They, they actually put $100 in there just like I told them. And ever since he escaped, he's been raising awareness with the darker sides of the Amish community. And that is why I'm here with the Amish in Ohio. The first taste of the Amish that I got was this bakery run by Eli's aunt that he took me to. Since Eli left the Amish, he's officially shunned by them. What does that mean? The shunning is basically you're isolated. You get your own food. You make your own food. You can't take anything from your hand from another baptized church member. So your oh, spouse... Wow can't even hand you your food. So both of us didn't really know if she was even gonna speak to him or us. Yeah, this is Mary's Market where my aunt sells a whole bunch of baked goods she makes, including candy, you know, chocolate candies and ingredients, all kinds of stuff. And it's the only Amish store that we have in the Old Order community here in Kenton. Jello cookies. Yes, Jello cookies. Yum. What is this, bacon dressing? Yeah, bacon mm. dressing. Mm. My favorite pie is the uh, pecan pie. Mmm. <laughs> Yum. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. How can you get Tim? What's that? I'm with Tim Stevens. You don't recognize me, do you? Do not. Can I show that pecan? Yeah. Three fifty. The last time I was here, you didn't recognize me, but this time you did. I just. I had to say something the last time. To both of our surprise, she was willing to speak to us and sell us Jello cookies. So you got your hopping your cookies. <laughs> hey, thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. Go ahead, go ahead. Now, this might be your first time seeing Eli, but to his community, he's, he's like a local celebrity, okay? Yeah, I enjoy your, your YouTube. Hey, thanks for watching. <laughs> you got yourself a fan there. Yeah. <laughs> is it like weird like to have like to be so recognized in your community yeah it, it is weird because like everywhere i go around this community there's always somebody to recognize me some they, they support what i do they love my videos but there's some that really don't like it because you know they do business with the amish they make mm -hmm. a lot of money that's their livelihood so they don't really like me talking about the bad things that i experience in the amish church i'll get a little bit of backlash but for the most part I have a lot of great supporters. They love the videos. They're always ready to shake my hand and ready to meet me. Yeah. Well, we got some Amish cookies here. You want to go try? You want to go first? I'm going to go for a red. You want to go for a red? Cheers. Cheers. Mmm. Made by my aunt. <laughs> and she still allows me to come in and buy baked goods off of her. Wow. She's one of the few that will not turn me down. She'll take my, my money from my hand and she'll allow me to wear these kind of clothing without, without Amish clothing, while a lot of the others will not allow me onto the property without having Amish clothing on, so. This buggy here is the for the youth group. The youth group, when you turn 17, that's what they drive. They have no tops on those buggies. 
Dang, they got the convertible. Yes, it's like a convertible buggy. <laughs> it's, a, it's open and they can see if you're gonna touch or kiss because that's those things are forbidden. <laughs> so they can see everything. Now, if you're curious why they travel by horse and buggy, you are not alone. I was too. I'd seen them going light speed down the road at like 50 kilometers per hour. I'd seen them parked outside Dollar General and getting loaded up with a 12 pack of Sprite. But I was curious what it was like to actually be inside one. So thankfully I found Mel's buggy rides. Uh, I wasn't sure if he knew English or not. There's another camera sitting there, I don't know. There's no place to go in there, I camera. <laughs> I wonder if all in there. <laughs> Also, he just wasn't the friendliest dude in Amish country. So what's your horse's name? Mac. Mac? And uh, we held up traffic for like 40 minutes. Like that was the whole ride. We just held up traffic as people angrily swerved around us as we went five miles per hour. <laughs> but during that time, we actually had very insightful conversations with each other. I haven't had any color times today. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, have a good rest of your day. Happy Easter. Anyways, uh, since that was over, I got a tour of a buggy factory where they actually make these. So I'll show you this because this one has a battery in it. So we oh. can see what they look like lit up. It's decked out. Yeah. So how much would one of these like cost altogether? $10,000 for a new buggy. By now, like me, you're probably wondering what compels them to lead such a tedious life. I had been here for a day and was like just still perplexed that they were real, that they weren't just like the meme. Even the non-Amish people that live and coexist with them are like equally as perplexed by them. Case in point, the Amish country theater. This was a local theater production and judging by the fact that they had a website, I wasn't too sure that it was being put on by actual Amish people, but that didn't stop me from getting a ticket. Uh, I sat down, there was like a stand-up comedian telling fart jokes to prime the audience for what we were about to see. The, the, uh, the noodles go through you quick, like Chinese food, right? <laughs> so, uh, some fresh popcorn. And then like literally a few minutes into the performance, there was like a, I guess it's like tornado country, there was like a tornado siren. Possible tornado touchdown in Pickaway County. We've and seen. everyone started like freaking out. No, just kidding. Uh, but I would have preferred that to the singing that they um, got on stage for. Black shirt, black shoes, black shirt. Um, and then just when I thought they were done, uh, they became a Beatles tribute band and sang like parodies of Beatles songs, but like as Amish people. I wanna burn your land. I wanna burn your land. Maybe I can drive your car. The crowd absolutely fucking loved it. Like they were singing along like 12 year old K pop stands at a Blackpink concert. Oh, for me personally, wasn't rocking with it, wasn't f catching the vibe, so I left. Uh, so what the fuck was that? But the next day, I went to a local grocery store because I like hadn't eaten since I got there. And this place was like Amish Mecca. There was like a horde of them just perusing the shelves, buying frozen custard, selecting Amish published books, such as The Little Boy Who Changed the World and God Gave Me Daddy. I didn't end up getting any food, but that is because I had dinner plans that night in an Amish colony. You see, I'd found a pamphlet in one of the Amish tour centers that was advertising like these dinners that would happen here and there, put on by Amish families in their Amish communities and in their homes. Hi there. Hi. <gasps> Hi. <laughs> oh. Hi there, I'm Ben. Hi. Nice to meet you. So I, I went to one. 
Are you a coffee drinker? No, not, not really. <laughs> no, I just can't get past the taste. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, my dumbass had started eating, and I was like, why are they so silent? How come they're not eating either? Amen. Amen. My dumbass forgot to say grace in possibly the worst, the worst setting that I could forget to pray before eating. I just started fucking eating the salad, which uh, was made with like crushed up Doritos on top, which was good. I'm, that's not a complaint. It was very good. But anyways, we ate dinner and then uh, I was served some quite delicious apple pie. So like, how would you say like apple pie? Apple boy. Apple boy. Is there any other phrases I shouldn't learn? What was that? Is there any other phrases I could like learn? Oh, uh, wie bist du? Wie bist du? How are you? Okay. Wie bist du? Hey, every night. You get ready for bed when she heads for her cage and she stays in her cage all night. <laughs> oh. So, do you folks have electricity in here? Nope. No. No. Our oh. <laughs> that's our electricity. <laughs> that's, that's just that's the a battery, battery light. in there. Okay. Would you like to see the barn? Oh sure. Yeah, that'd be cool. Thank you. Wow. You guys have a lot of buggies. Six seven. I think we got in here. Wow. It's got about. Of these. Wow. Eat a lot of food. <laughs> What's his name? His name? Yeah. Uh, I can't think of it right <laughs> We got a stranger here from California. Yeah. California, yeah. <laughs> well, you're pretty far from Well, actually. Pretty far. <laughs> actually, he was. Probably <laughs> a lot warmer out west than up north. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> There's a barn on that end, yeah. Oh, 30 head, yeah. So would you uh, be open to new members of your Amish group? If you ever get in this way again, why? Feel free to stop in. Oh, thank you. So I guess I have like a lukewarm invitation to join the Amish. And you know, I would take them up on that very compelling offer. Uh, but the next day was very, very different. I had a good sense of how the Amish presented themselves, but I wanted to go deeper with Eli. So he took me to the farm of another member of the old order Amish community. Howdy, howdy. Howdy, howdy. Hello. Nice day, ain't it? Oh, it's beautiful. So how's everything been going, man? Well, pretty good. Business yeah, going pretty good. Business. The buildings and everything? Yeah, the buildings. They talked about little things in the community, um, gossip about him being on TikTok. Man, I'm a hate got phones and they ain't got no TikTok, but they know what I'm doing. Well, you know what it is. He's apparently got all these friends, English friends. They come out and show it to him. However, when we were there, um, we learned that there was another suicide in the Amish community. Another, another Amish. Uh, yeah, he himself. Yeah, they put him outside the graveyard. So, with no marker. Yeah, no marker. Uh huh. No marker. That pisses but me he, off. They should put a marker there. That you know how but, you know how that makes my blood boil. I'm not sure. That's a bunch of bull crap. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? No, I really don't. I really don't. Uh, uh, I really don't want to say too much about it, but right. I don't think I'd do it that way. Right. Well, I think that most of the young generation wouldn't do it that way, but yeah. it's the elders, you know. Yeah, yeah right. So now right. they have my dad and then another, another one. Yeah. You can now see how they look at that. Beautiful. Right, you can. The last place that Eli took me was his father's grave uh, in the cemetery where a lot of other Amish people were buried. And with Eli's father, it was the same case as the guy who had just taken his own life. They were both buried away from everyone else. And in the case of the man who just died, he was buried without even a grave marker. Yeah, and that's my dad, Henry Yoder, all by himself. My father, he actually was very, very depressed in the Amish church. He was shunned for a lot of different things. You know, he had an alcohol problem. He was depressed. So he obviously uh, went to alcohol to try to numb the pain. Now, alcohol was not okay. So the Amish church shunned him for that. He was in trouble for that. And because of all that rejection, just constantly, he eventually just got to where he didn't want to live. So they said, well, we're going to charge him with murder. He's condemned. We're going to, we must bury him separately. So they buried him completely separate over here. But at first, 
they put a fence all the way around over here. They put a, by this post right here, from this post all the way out to the other post over there. And I had, I was already out of the Amish at that time. And so I came out and I tore the fence down. So they put a heavier duty fence up that was metal. And I came out and I tore that down too. Wow. And after twice destroying their fence, they finally stopped putting fences up and just buried him separately over here. But it's because of the way he died for why they said he cannot be buried with the rest of the people. One day, I'm out there on a Sunday. He stayed behind, didn't go to church, and I'm visiting with him. He had some back problems and some pain. He says, I want you to come pick me up in four weeks, which was on a Sunday, when everybody else goes to church again. Mm. So we made plans. He said, 9 a.m., sharp, there on Sunday morning. I was all excited. I'm like, yeah, he's leaving the Amish. I don't care about his alcoholism. I don't care how, how many problems he has. I'm willing to help him through all of that. And so I went and, and uh, told my wife, she said, let's go get a di different vehicle and let's get all planned for it so we can haul him around. And the Saturday before Sunday is when he took his own life. And that, that was the hardest time of my life, trying to, to cope with, Dad, I was coming to get you and rescue you. And then you just ended your life. Why? I want answers. So for a long time at that time, when I was in deep pain, I actually used to sit out here and I would drink a case of beer and just get drunk where I couldn't even hardly walk away from the graveyard. Wow. And I dumped the other case down in with him and I felt like I was drinking with him. But that was my way of coping with that early pain. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was a rough one. That was my hardest out of all that I went to in the Amish. That was the hardest part in my entire life. Now, since his father took his own life, some of the members of the Amish community would constantly vandalize the grave when Eli would just be putting flowers on it. These flowers, when I started putting them on, the Amish said, oh, no, we cannot. That's against our religion to have flowers. And then I had a camera sitting on here and this little stick for a while. I took the camera down now, but had a camera on there for a while watching to see who's going to do it because the sheriff's department told me that they would actually arrest the Amish, they're not above the law, and would do something about it, get justice. And that's the story of my father. So I just wanted to start off and like ask you what life was like when you were in the Amish. Yeah, growing up Amish, it was one of the most strictest communities in Old Order is what they would call it, but there's also other communities that are a little bit stricter. And they have like the Swartz and Trooper Amish, you got the New Order Amish, you got the New New Order Amish. So when somebody leaves, you're basically viewed as you're giving over to the devil. You're giving yourself over to the world. So at a very young age, my dad believed the church that his mom is now give it over to the devil, give it over to the world. She's a bad, bad person. Mm -hmm. So I think that is where my dad's depression started you know he was trying to figure out what is going on here like dad is still here the church is saying mom is a horrible person and he couldn't undo that he's struggling with this all of his life so i was finally getting answers you know i'm out of the amish and now now i could start understanding why my dad was in the situation he was in mm -hmm. because he's only hearing one side he never got mom's side and if he would have been able to understand why mom left you know my grandma then he would have been able to make some sense out of it because he felt rejected. Like, why would mom not love me? Why would mom just run away like that? But then as I got to speak with her, there was physical abuse, there was sexual abuse. And in the Old Order Amish where I'm from, you submit, the women have to submit to the church. The very day that I left the community was very stressful, kind of. A lot of people say, why do you call it escape? Can you just walk out? No, not in my group where I'm from. You had to secretly plan it. If anybody found out, you were stopped at all costs. They would get the elders of the church. They would get the parents together. They would like physically stop you? They would literally corner you because after I left, I actually tried to help a guy leave. There was a whole van full of people that came and they tried to take him physically away. Wow. And I stepped in and I had to say, look, out here we have a law. He's 18 years old. He can make his own choice. And I looked at him and I said, do you want to be out here or do you want to be on? And she says, no, I'm staying with you like, yo. <laughs> And so he stayed away and, and, and they left because they knew that if, if they didn't, I know the law, I know our rights now, I'll call the cops. Yeah. And, and they're going to make you leave because he's 18. Within the Amish communities, like, what would you say like are some of the most like restrictive things? You're not going to be allowed to show your ankle in my old around Amish church. <laughs> <laughs> what would happen if you just like flash a little ankle? <laughs> well, they're not going to say a whole lot about that, but it, it's, it's one of those things where they wanted us to... Um, 
have the long sleeve all the way down below the elbow. Wow. Because if, if you had your roll above the elbow, then you can actually get two weeks in, in the shunning on <laughs> Sunday because you, you showed too much skin. So we had a rule that had to be of the elbow on that. You know, you could show this skin right here, but if you went and rolled it up all the way up where my t-shirt's at right now, you're going to be confronted by the elders of the church. The word S-E-X was forbidden. That was a worldly word. The word love, I love you, that was forbidden. That was a worldly word. You not want to use You couldn't even say, I love no. you. No. A lot of people from the outside living in, they don't realize all of those restrictions, all of those rules that are there. So the outside looking in, it looks very attractive. You see the lifestyle, you see how they wave and they're so friendly. And so it's very attractive. The few people that I remember that tried to join the Amish, very few made it. I only know actually one right now that actually made it all the way through and ended up having a family of 17. And today he's a preacher. <laughs> now, there are some of them that have tried it. And usually when they failed is when they came to that baptism oath. Usually the ones that try to join, that's usually when they change their mind and they say, you know, I do love the lifestyle and I, I was very, very happy here, but now they're just so harsh coming down with these restrictions and I can't t deal with it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And when I do, I could talk for hours just because I was physically abused. I watched my mom get physically abused at a very young age and it was terrifying. In the church itself, they have a system in the Old Order Amish that allows a lot of bad crimes, a lot of bad stuff to go unpunished. You know, there's really no justice like what the world would experience as far as going to court, you know, have a DA, have a judge, and have a system, justice system. There's no jail, there's no court. When you actually get voted to be forgiven, you can't bring that back up because the, vote, the church voted to be for, for you to be forgiven. And if every vote was yes, then now God forgave you. So mm. if the victim is struggling maybe and then that comes back to haunt them and they say something about it, they can actually get just as many weeks in the shunning or more for not forgiving. They deem it as you didn't forgive if you brought it back up. Wow. And so I really hate that kind of system and that kind of thinking because the victims are kind of damaged already and, and they're trying to cope with all of this. Now, the former Amish that I teamed up with after I left the Amish uh, started this mission called Amish Rescue Mission. And they're all victims. You know, a lot of the ones that are affiliated with this program is victims themselves. So God put it on their heart that they go out there and help those that can't help themselves. And so you can sponsor through Amish Rescue Mission on their website, www.amishrescuemission.org. And you can go down and fill out information. You can even sponsor some of the victims they pulled out of there and, and help with resources because they all need, you know, education. Some of them got to be undone right here. There's enough former Amish now that we're, we can make we're, we're much louder now. We can make much more awareness because there's a lot of former Amish that are able to help. You know, the Amish, like, to people my age and people who aren't even, like, around them for the most part, like, it's such a, like, a mysterious, like, mystifying thing. It's so easy to just make fun of, like, the Amish and or just make broad generalizations. Like, oh, they're, they're growing carrots, they're growing potatoes. But, like, there's so much more going on, like, right. good and bad, so. Yeah, and, you know, it, even though I shared the good, the bad, and the ugly, my own personal experience, I also want everybody to know there's so many good, loving Amish people out there. Yeah. They he hate evil just as much as I hate evil. And they just want people to, to come in and see and experience their awesome, simple lifestyle where everything is being shunned of the world, but yet we love you and we want to show you how we live off the land, how our food tastes. And, and some of them have these places where you can come in and have an Amish meal and even stay there. That's the cool Amish. Yeah, I might just join it. <laughs> it sounds great. All right, thank you, Eli. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Um, that's all. Thank you for watching. Tip of the hat. This is from... This is from Party City. Love you. Bye.